Getting stronger and more flexible doesn't need to take hours in the gym. I think it's important to disconnect what we see online and that finish line sort of level of training versus what you actually need to get started and sustain progress towards it. Instead of trying to find something new and novel, I think it's important to try and reflect and ask the question, what has given me success in the past that I can implement now and see progress in the future. So I decided to go back and look at some of my original training clips, some of the things I started to share online. And uh, I found out that the origin of some of my best achievements were actually performing a daily practice. Ticking off the middle split or the front split was actually something that started almost 10 years ago with me just committing to stretch my hamstrings every single day because I couldn't touch my toes. This eventually developed into roughly a 30 minute daily stretching routine and was actually one of the first big videos that I released on this channel sharing it. The one arm handstand was also something that was born from following a hashtag handstand365 on Instagram about eight years ago, just doing a little bit every single day, culminating in six years later, being able to perform a 10 second one arm. The commonality between these two is that daily practice really makes it from being something you do occasionally to something that becomes part of your lifestyle. It doesn't matter if you don't necessarily want to do it, it just becomes something that you actually do. So what can we do on a daily basis? I've got three ones for you. It's gonna be skills, it's gonna be flexibility, and it's gonna be strength. But before we go into that, another tool that I've used over the years to improve my movement and training is Barefoot Shoes, which is why I'm very excited to announce this partnership with Vivo Barefoot. Modern shoes disconnect us from the ground and weaken our feet over years of use. Our feet have 33 joints, 26 bones, hundreds of ligaments, muscles, connective tissue. If we don't expose them, we're never gonna train them. That's why I've worn and used Vivos now for about six years, uh, and they're my favorite shoes. So if you want to grab yourself a pair, you can use this link, get a nice discount, support the channel, and uh, sure you'll be seeing plenty from them in the future. For skills, that daily practice is really, really vital and useful because when we're learning physical skills, we need repetition. We need to repeat it often. This is gonna help us connect those two dots. Basically, when we fire those neural pathways, initially, we don't know how to get from A to B. Gradually, over time, we repeat that signal more and it gets wrapped by something called myelin, which helps to insulate that nerve signal, make it faster, make it more efficient, and makes us better at doing the skill. There's a fantastic book called The Talent Code by Daniel Coyle, which I would highly recommend reading. It talks all about this concept further. One of the key aspects of this book is chunking, breaking down skills into the smallest pieces we can to train them. In the case of the handstand, this would be balance, entry, and body shape. If we're just starting out, we can get an idea of balance using something like a frog position. We can then build strength in the shoulders using the wall. When we combine these together, we can start to see glimpses of balance in handstand, which turn into seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds. And then when you put them together, you get the handstand. If you want more details about training this, then you can check out the full tutorial that I've got. But in terms of what you can do on a daily basis, here's an example of a five to 10 minute routine that you can go about. Just be sure that you take things slow because the wrists need time to adapt to that daily practice. Flexibility is another one that benefits greatly from a daily, especially when starting out. A lot of initial progress with flexibility comes from just being better able to tolerate that discomfort that is the stretch. This research shows that you can see benefits from just five minutes per position per week. If we're gonna just take a, a nice number to look at, that would equate to about one minute per day. Remember, this is per stretch, so we can either do one one minute long stretch or we can break that up into two 30 second stretches. We can fit this in at various points in the day, whether it's used as a break from work, get up, do a few different stretches, hang from a door frame pull up bar, or we can fit the stretching into our work and use different seated positions, whether that be a stretch on the floor, sitting in a squat to do our work in. My personal favorite was to simply add some stretching before sleep. For most people, I would certainly include a glute stretch of some kind. Here are a few different examples. And I would consider the couch stretch, I think just a fantastic one to stretch the quads, open the hip flexors, and do something to counteract the common sitting posture. Other than that, you can sprinkle in whatever poses fit the goals that you have, or if you just want a general approach, then maybe check out one of the follow-alongs that you can find on this channel. Finally, let's talk about strength. I like to start with less. 
and the research does support this. This is 2023 systematic review by Kari et al, which showed that just two sets performed twice per week and up to three sets performed three times per week showed some great improvements in both strength and hypertrophy. It should be noted though that these need to be at a higher intensity, somewhere between the six to 10 rep range. So this might look like just picking a couple of exercises and performing two to three sets every single day. We can alternate exercises, full body, push, pull, kind of whatever you have availability for and equipment and time for. Here's an example of a way that you can implement it. Something like a push, pull, legs repeating works pretty well and 10 to 20 minutes a day. If you enjoy doing standard strength training, then we can still complement this on a daily basis, but it's gonna look slightly different. We're gonna to want to do some very light, more recovery focused sessions, thinking about blood flow and greasing the groove of those movements that we want to support. Just doing push-ups or rows, in between that 10 and 20 rep range, couple of sets. The key here is to make it very easy. We want to be five, six reps short of failure. It's just not gonna help recovery. We wanna keep it light, easy, and breezy. I think really the main point that I wanted to get across with this video is that the training that we do when we're getting started or on our way to that end goal, that finishing line, is very different to the training at the end. A lot of this is really just about showing up being consistent and getting that compounding effect of training, those small incremental improvements that, yes, maybe that one session here and there doesn't make a difference, but when we add them all up over time, the impact is significantly more meaningful. If you want a further example of how we might go about combining all of these factors into one short training session, then I'd highly recommend checking out this video in which we covered the ultimate minimalist walking workouts. Otherwise, I hope there are plenty of examples in this video to help you on your way. If you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up button, support the channel. Right next to it is that subscribe button if you don't want to miss any more future videos. And other than that, happy new year. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a strong week. Peace.